But we begin tonight with this photo, the one you see there on your screen. That's the Maverick, John McCain, meeting with the rebels during his secret mission into Syria this week. We showed you a few of these images of Senator McCain hanging out with Syrian rebels like you do earlier this week. And we talked about the craziness of the whole affair of John McCain sneaking off into an active war zone, freelancing his own foreign policy in the midst of some really very delicate negotiations being undertaken right now by the State Department. Today, there is a new development in the story of this picture. This picture contains what could be an absolutely explosive revelation about who the Syrian rebels actually are, which is the central question of the entire debate over whether and how much and how we should intervene in the Syrian civil war. Okay, last week, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee voted overwhelmingly bipartisan to approve a bill calling for the U.S. to arm some Syrian rebel groups. Republican Rand Paul was one of only three no votes on the committee, and here's what he had to say about the idea of aiding Syrian rebels. I think there's an irony that you can't get beyond here, that you will be voting to authorize to send arms to an ally of al-Qaeda. These are forces that are allied fighting against the government of Syria, and I have no love lost for Assad. I think he's a horrible authoritarian like so many. But you will be funding today the allies of al-Qaeda. It's an irony you cannot overcome. John McCain also had a problem with the bill. Of course, McCain was not concerned about who we'd be sending arms to, but rather we should be sending them, whoever they are, heavier weapons than what's authorized under the bill. John McCain has been called upon to answer the concerns of Rand Paul and so many other people who worry that arming the rebels in Syria will ultimately mean arming al-Qaeda-linked extremists. Now, John McCain knows there are extremists scattered among the rebels in Syria. But worry not, America. John McCain has a plan. He's just going to figure out which rebels are good guy rebels, which rebels are bad guy rebels, and only arm the good guys. Every single day, more and more extremists flow in, whether it be from Iraq, whether it be from Yemen, whether it be from Libya. They're flowing in all the time, these extremists, but they still do not make up a sizable portion. So we can identify who these people are. We can help the right people. Easy peasy. You just pick out the right people, give them missiles and stuff. It might sound, what's the word, uh, easier said than done. But that is actually the entire conceit behind the John McCain-led Arm the Rebels movement. The idea you can just step into this incredibly complicated, entrenched, sectarian-fueled, horrific civil war and pick out the good guys from the bad guys. Now, that conceit is actually foundational to the bill, the bill that passed through the Foreign Relations Committee last week, which calls for arming, and this, I'm quoting the bill, vetted opposition vetted opposition, as if there is some awesome foolproof vetting process for rebel militia groups in the middle of a war zone. Like a simple questionnaire, like, do you work for Al-Qaeda? Do you hang out with Al-Qaeda? If you had some missiles, what would you use them for? Okay, so maybe not so easy, which brings us back to the photo of John McCain hanging out with Syrian rebels this week and the big revelation. When this photo surfaced in reports about McCain's secret trip, a guy from Lebanon saw it on the news. And he thought to himself, you know, I recognize one of the rebels in that picture. This Lebanese guy was on a religious pilgrimage last year, just religious pilgrimage, and he was crossing through Syria on his way back to Lebanon, and the bus he was riding in was reportedly ambushed by 30 armed men, and he was kidnapped and taken hostage along with 10 other religious pilgrims. His kidnappers were from a Syrian rebel group, and that one controls most of the Aleppo region of Syria along the Turkish border. Now, nine of the original 11 kidnapped victims are a year later still being held captive by this rebel group, okay? But one of the two kidnapped victims, he's been released. And he's going through the newspaper and he sees this photo and he says he recognizes this guy seen hanging out with John McCain in Syria this week holding a camera as the photographer and spokesman of the rebel group that kidnapped and held him captive last year. The former kidnapped victim telling the Lebanon Daily Star today, quote, I recognized him immediately. He was the photographer who was brought in to take our photos during captivity. He works with the kidnappers. He knows them very well. Now, we cannot, and NBC News has not independently confirmed that this guy, seen with John McCain, is in fact the spokesman slash photographer from the rebel group that kidnapped a bunch of religious pilgrims just, it seems, for the heck of it. We cannot be sure whether or not it's the same guy. But really, that is precisely what is so disturbing about this accusation from the Lebanese kidnapped victim, because, drumroll, neither can John McCain. 
McCain's office telling BuzzFeed only that none of the rebels he met with identified himself by the name of the spokesman for the kidnap group, but that if it turns out McCain did accidentally meet with a guy from the kidnapper group, that would be, and I am quoting, regrettable. Now, imagine the quote that you would get from John McCain's office a year from now when, let's just say hypothetically, some surface-to-air missile we shipped into Syria ends up shooting down an Israeli plane full of passengers. What's a word stronger than regrettable? Joining me at the table, journalist Rula Jabril, MSNBC and Newsweek contributor, and Matt Welch, editor-in-chief of Reason Magazine and author of McCain, The Myth of a Maverick. It's great to have you both here. Thank you. you. Rula, last night, this story broke. It had broken in the Lebanese papers and English language outlets were writing about it. And you were emailing me um, extremely upset about this. You said, this, this is really bad news. Why did this upset you? What's, what does this mean for the US and the way it relates to the region? It's I, I, actually the visit of McCain is already upsetting because it comes in a very delicate moment where we are trying to push both sides to negotiate in Geneva. There is no positive outcome of the civil war. We know that. But this photo, and of course McCain is going there in the midst of a private negotiation, posing with the rebels, sending two signs. One, I don't care about the negotiation. I want to go and arm, and no matter what, America will arm. So it sends a message of confusion. Yes. Another message that's the worst, that we condone what the rebels are doing, that we are actually siding by the Sunnis. They're already paranoid in Syria. I visited Syria and I visited Lebanon last year for many weeks. And everybody was telling me there's a conspiracy. American, Israeli, Saudis all together against us Shia and they want to take us out no matter what. The stakes in this conflict are so high and that's why there's no major defection and that's why the Shiites are so concerned that there's no future for them in a post-Assad era, let, that and, they will be slaughtered. And, let and me, this photo confirmed that. It, let me explain this just in terms of the dynamics here. It's Sunni, two major strains of Islam, Sunni and Shia. Sunni is majority, Shia minority throughout the region. Yes. But there, there are basically three pillars of Shia power in the region. Hezbollah, the militia in, in Lebanon, yeah. the Assad regime, which is a, a small sect of Shia called Alawite, and the Iranian uh, regime. Those three are now together allies, right? Iraq. I would add Iraq. Iraq increasing. Absolutely. Those are now allies fighting against the, the Sunni, Sunni, the largely Sunni militia. And so it is being understood in the region and is in the region a sectarian war increasingly between the two dominant strains. And John McCain standing there saying, I am posing with a guy who is a Sunni who kidnapped possibly religious pilgrims Hello. who were just on a bus going to a shrine. That is a signal. Matt, this is what I want to hear from you, okay? We in the liberal media, we love to talk about Republican civil wars. It's like our favorite thing. We write about them all the time. And I've been anticipating like, when is there gonna be the anti-neocon revolt for real in the Republican party? It never materializes. Well, here's Rand Paul today, who we just saw a clip of. His, he has an op-ed today, he says about uh, the Senate bill. It is unclear what national security interests we have in civil war in Syria. It is very clear that any attempt to aid the Syrian rebels would be complicated and dangerous precisely because we don't know who these people are. Like other American interventions in the past, U.S. involvement could actually help the extremists. My question to you is, is there an actual real civil war happening inside the Republican Party over foreign policy? And does Rand Paul represent something bigger than Rand Paul? Yes, is the short answer. There is a wacko birds, which is John McCain's term for Rand Paul, uh, and Ted Cruz after Rand Paul's filibuster in February. It was the wacko birds trying to get all the media attention, which John McCain was very upset about because he hates that. He hates media attention. Uh, versus the angry birds, right? The uh, John McCain who bark <laughs> at these people. Or, <laughs> this is the way we're describing it. Wacko, wacko birds, birds versus angry, angry birds. I like this. Okay. Watch it from now on. That's <laughs> That's uh, what like we're talking this. about. But it's Lindsey Graham who, right after the uh, after the filibuster, said, you know, I thought we were at war, using these kind of 2003 vintage types of sloganeering out there, and it's falling on increasingly deaf ears, both in the American public writ large and also in the Republican Party. It isn't a dominant caucus, the Rand Paul wing, for sure. Right. And they're reaching out to Democrats. They're looking for Democrats who are very serious about being anti-war, being pro-civil liberties, and they don't really depend on the Republican Party. But that caucus is growing. There's a bunch of new in the House, people like Justin Amash, um, who have come in, in in the last couple of years, who have come in, and they're very seriously anti-interventionists, and they're applying pressure on people like McCain. And this also just seems like a textbook case for anti-interventionists. I mean, even someone who doesn't, like, identifies the anti-interventionist, just a person, you, right now, watching this television show, 
listening to this about Syria, looking into it, peering into the horror that is absolutely unquestionably the Assad regime. But watching the gears wind up, I mean, everyone was paying attention to tornadoes last week when this thing passed out of Senate Foreign Relations Committee 15 to 3, and it was just like, ho-hum, of course we're arming the rebels. But and he's endangering American lives and American interests. If they want to pr protect American interests, they should push their rebels and the regime and negotiate with China and Russia and push them towards Geneva. Because Geneva is the conference Geneva that, that was announced peace. after John Kerry went and visited uh, uh, Russia. And right? after a long negotiation with the Russian, the Russian didn't want to hear about it. Right. And today they agreed on it. So what he's doing, John McCain, undermining the administration and endangering our interests there. Because whoever Shiites in the world today who are paranoid already and who are feel threatened. And not they're unjustifiably existed, paranoid not in some Unjustifiably, right. seeing that we right. already attack them everywhere. Right. What they will do, they will start attacking Americans, and maybe they will start even kidnapping Americans around the world in response to this. Because this picture actually shows that we are not only condoning, that we are standing by them. Right. The Syrian civil war is becoming our war, and this, sh and this should never become our war. One thing that Rand Paul pointed out in his uh, op-ed was that, hey, these are the same people who are calling for arming the rebels, who are calling for arming Libyan rebels. And they were assuring us back then, oh, there's no connections to al-Qaeda, there's no Islamic terrorism involved. That has turned out to be false. And, and also, also they, the, they the, turned on a dime once the Benghazi thing went down to be like Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda. And they're also the same people, and McCain in particular, who was cozying up to Gaddafi in 2009. That's right. Really. I mean, he is, had, since 1999 or so, he introduced this idea of rogue state rollback, where basically if there's a dictator, we will arm the rebels. It doesn't matter who. And if they get cracked down this upon, is what you get. we this have to uh, we have to fight. These are Bin Laden. Look at them carefully before well, you... Well, I don't know. I, I just want to say for the record, I don't know these gentlemen, and so that, that's a strong statement. I'm, but 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 the, the, but symbolically, uh, that that could very well prove to be the case. Rula Jabril of MSNBC and Newsweek, and Matt Welch of Reason Magazine. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Pension